Hello, my name is Nancy Strickland, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to discuss security in Windows Phone 7 Silverlight applications. There are a couple of aspects to security on Windows Phone 7 that can affect you as a developer. First of all, there are built-in security features on Windows Phone 7 that can affect how you have to program. And second, if your application will be sending or receiving data across the web, then you'll need to be sure that any sensitive data is secured. Silverlight for Windows Phone 7 is designed with some built-in security features. The sandbox is the execution environment for your applications, and it provides only a limited set of privileges. For example, your applications can't access the file system or other system resources like a traditional .NET application can. That keeps applications from executing code that might affect the operating system or any of the features that are built into the phone, like the camera or the email. The way this will affect your programming is that you'll need to learn how to access these features in code because you can't call them directly. They're outside your sandbox. So to use them, you'll use what's called launchers and choosers. I'm not going to discuss those here because there's another whole video from this series using the Windows Phone 7 camera that explains launchers and choosers and demonstrates them. I said that applications can't access the file system, meaning the underlying file system, but because applications do often need to store data locally, Windows Phone 7 has a feature called isolated storage. That's a storage area that's reserved for an application, but that's fully isolated so that no other application can access it, and of course, your application can't access storage for any other application. The way this will affect your programming is that you'll need to learn how to create and manipulate isolated storage. It's simple, really, but again, I'm not going to cover it in this video. Instead, I'll refer you to the video on isolated storage that's part of this Windows Phone 7 and 7 series on MS Dev. It covers the whole topic in more detail, and it includes a demo. What we just talked about are built-in protections that you don't have to implement yourself. You just have to know how to work with them. And then in addition to those, there are tools that Silverlight provides for implementing extra security depending on what it is your application does. For example, some kinds of mobile apps make calls to services or work with data that's on a web server or on the Windows Azure platform in the cloud. If your application might be sending sensitive information over the web, then you'll want to secure it. Here are the namespaces that can help you with that. There's System Security Principle, which defines information about the user and, and the user's roles, and System Security Permissions, which controls access to particular resources, and System Security Cryptography, which has classes for encryption and for hashing. Cryptography on Windows Phone 7 supports these algorithms. AES, that's Advanced Encryption Standard, it's private key encryption, and that allows you to encrypt or decrypt data. It's a two-way process, so you can get the original data back from the encrypted version. Then there's Secure Hash Algorithm 1 and 256. Those are hashing algorithms that allow you to hash data, which means to do a one-way conversion. You can't get back to the original data from the hash, but you can store the hash and use it to verify that some other data matches the original data even without having the original data itself in the code, only the hash of it. We're going to see that in a minute in the demo. And then there's hash-based message authentication code, which is used to check whether a message sent over an insecure channel has been tampered with, provided that the sender and the receiver share a secret key, because the message is mixed with a secret key as well as being hashed. Now let's see a demo of some of this. To start, I'll open a new phone project using the Silverlight template that you can get by following the installation instructions in the Getting Started video that's part of this series. This is a short video, so I'll only cover hashing in the demo, but I'll give you a link afterwards to more documentation and sample code for some of the other cryptography features. Now I'll drag a text box and a button onto the screen. The user will enter a password in the text box, and then clicking the button is going to verify what the user entered against a hash that's stored in the app. So first I'll double click the button to get the click event. And I'm going to paste in this code to call a verify hash method. I haven't written that method, I'll write it in just a minute. That'll verify what the user entered against the stored hash and then show a message box to show if there's a match. And now I'll write the verify hash method.
it'll accept a string input, that's the what's in the text box, and return a boolean to see if there's a match or not. First, I'm instantiating a Unicode encoding object that I'll use to convert that input string into an array of Unicode bytes. You can see that that Unicode encoding requires a using statement, so I'll add it. And while I'm here, I might as well add the cryptography namespace because I'm going to be needing it next anyway. And here's where I'll need it. I want to instantiate the SHA1 managed class and then use it to apply that hashing algorithm to my array of bytes. And that managed hashing class is from the system security cryptography namespace. Then here I'm setting up another byte array that holds the hash of the password. You can't read it, and the only way I know what's in it is that I hashed the password string earlier and then copied the result here. Remember that it's one way, so I can't retrieve the password back out of this hash. That's the security feature of a hash. And now I just have to loop through the stored hash and match it to the hashed version of the input. If any byte isn't the same in both hashes, I return false. Now it's finished and I'll run it. First I'll just click the button, leaving text box there in the text box. And of course it tells me in the message box that that's not the right password. Now I'll enter the real password, which is pass me. And I see that that's right. If you were validating the password over a network, you could hash the user's input first and then send the hash over the network and then match it to the hash of the password that you stored on the other end, on the server, on Windows Azure. That would verify that the password's matched without ever having to make the password itself vulnerable by sending it. Here's the link to more information on cryptography in Silverlight, which includes encryption and HMAC. And that's been a quick seven minute look at Windows Phone 7 security. I'll put a copy of the code up on my blog for download, and as I post new videos, I announce them on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.